Ladies and gentlemen, Elizabeth Becker on how to be a foreign correspondent. Please give it up. So um, basically, imagine yourself in the back of a car. You're being tear gassed, your eyes are burning. You just want to get out of there, and you're fleeing from a riot at the West Bank in 2009. Most people, that would be a nightmare. And for me, it was a dream come true because I always wanted to be um, a war correspondent, just like my hero, Nellie Bly, who was actually an international reporter for humanitarian needs. And she just inspired me um, from a young age that even though I was in my early 20s, I had no experience. Who cares? If I want to do something, I could do it. I just had to figure out how. So Sabil is an organization that gave me a great scholarship to um, learn about Palestinian Christianity in the West Bank of Israel in 2009. It was founded by Desmond Tutu, who's another hero of mine um, for his peace activism. So once they gave me the $2,000, I knew I had to get prepared. This happened really quickly um, once I decided to do it. And uh, basically, I had no, you can't prepare to be a foreign correspondent. Um, I read everything I could. I didn't understand anything about Palestine. But before I knew it, I was on a plane to Tel Aviv with a tent, like I'm going to go camp out in Israel and study whoever. <laughs> and uh, as the plane was landing, I basically just had this thought. And even our favorite superhero reporter, Super, or Spider-Man, might feel like this um, sometimes. And I felt like this for the next six months. I had absolutely no idea what I was doing trying to go be a foreign correspondent in the Middle East. But um, I decided to make friends with people, which is something I'm actually pretty good at, um, even though I'm not that great of a reporter. So I worked at a, with Palestinian Christians, and I lived with Israeli Jews, and I um, volunteered with Palestinian Muslims, and everybody thought I was a, um, a Jewish spy for some reason. So, you know, I kind of realized everybody's got this wall up, and when you're a reporter, you're going to have to get down to their level and be in their wall with them. So you're not just looking at a map, you're, you're right there with them. So I realized I needed to get pretty humble. This wasn't just an adventure for me, this was people's real stories. And everybody needed to um, be able to share openly with me. So this is Mrs. Um's granddaughter. She was a Palestinian, this is Mrs. Um, um, that I met whose home was demolished in Jerusalem. She ended up living on the sidewalk. And this was a woman who didn't have any walls around her, literally, but also figuratively, she taught me that um, you, know, you can just speak out and not have any fear. But a lot of these people are living in fear. So in Bethlehem, I met people who had lost their son in the middle of the night to a house raid. Um, a man in Hebron had seen his neighbors welded into their homes for peace activism. And in a refugee camp, I met um, Palestinians who had still had the keys to their homes but were no longer allowed to live there. So when people stop you with guns and you're trying to be a foreign correspondent, you're on the right track. And it doesn't feel right but you know you're about to get some really valuable information if you can just stay calm. So one thing that helped was I joined a local news group called the Palestine Monitor, and I got to see some of these stories really um, up close and in person from totally fearless people, like the head of the um, Palestinian uh, government in agriculture and Giuliano Merhamis. Giuliano Merhamis was the man I was so fortunate to interview. Um, he is a huge peace activist. And unfortunately, at the end of our interview, he ended up getting me fired, and it was the last interview I ever got to give because he thought I was a Jewish spy, like everybody. <laughs> um, unfortunately, Giuliano was assassinated a year after our interview, and I always had some resentment against him, but I remembered a quote that he gave me in our interview, which is, when you are afraid is when you must speak. And Giuliano was very afraid for good reason, but your voice counts. So if you have any interest whatsoever in either being a foreign correspondent or just sharing someone's story. We have to celebrate the fact that we do have free speech and we're allowed to come out places like Ignite and tell people's stories. Um, so if you still want to be a foreign correspondent or just convince anyone anywhere that you're a spy, which I turned out to be very good at, um, you know, here are some, you know, a recap, I guess, of some things that I had to consider. Um, basically, you know, just like Spidey says, go for it. Um, decide who or what is going to motivate you and, you know, kind of just throw caution to the wind because overall it's not, it wasn't nearly as bad, I guess, as I thought it was going to be and all the bad parts ended up being pretty good in the long run. I'm still here, aren't I? So um, speak out and share your story. Whatever that story is, we have places like Ignite, we have Twitter, we have Facebook. 
go ahead, get online, and um, share your story. So if you're interested in talking to me afterward, um, I've included my, oh, it didn't show up. Oh, Soch Butterfly is my Twitter. And uh, there's my email account. I'm sorry if I inflamed anybody with all this. But seriously, if you want to follow up with me, I'd love to talk about it a little bit more. Thank you. Yeah.